Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the next in a series of Gaming Rules Quick and Dirty Review videos. In this video I am going to be giving you my first impressions of Keyforge, published by Fantasy Flight Games, designed by Richard Garfield, and I was very lucky to get a couple of decks of this at Gen Con 2018. The game is to be released in Q4 of 2018, I don't exactly know when, and I've been playing this game a number of times and I've taken it to a few UK events and I've taught a whole bunch of other people how to play. So this is my impressions of the game so far. I've personally played it probably about four or five times and as I say I've taught a whole host of other people how to play as well. So here's what I think about it. Now the first thing about this game which has got everybody talking about it is that this is something very, very different. Uh, this is uh, what the first in a series of unique games from Fantasy Flight Games. They've been working on new computer and printing technology, and basically when you buy a pack, which uh, costs $10 or eight pounds in the UK, I believe, this deck is completely unique to you. It has a unique uh, list of cards that are in there, which is shown on one of the cards, um, and it, it's completely unique. I'm not saying every single card in here is unique to you, no. There are 350 cards in the set, as far as I know. Uh, seven different houses, 50 cards in each house. So you will have cards in your deck which are also in other decks, but the number of combinations of cards to make up a deck is apparently 140 quadrillion. So basically nobody anywhere in the world will have a deck that is exactly like this. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely you can just change your deck to match somebody else's. Well, that's the other thing with this game. You buy a deck of cards, it's 36 cards in the deck, and that's it. You are not allowed to change the deck. There is no deck construction within this game. You are not allowed to add cards to the deck, you're not allowed to remove cards from the deck. This deck is yours, and this back of this card is unique. There's a computer algorithm that generates what cards are in this deck. That same algorithm generates a name for this deck. So this is um, Captain Uniella, the renowned Duchess, right? Only one, this is this is it. This is the Captain Uniella, Uniella, the renowned Duchess deck. There's only one of these in the entire world. This card back has been generated using the same algorithm. So nobody can, nobody can ever have a deck that is exactly the same as this. Now, somebody else somewhere in the world is gonna have a deck which is, you know, 95% the same as this but not exactly the same as this. So that's pretty cool. It's very different. Every other card game I know allows for deck construction, and this one doesn't. Now, one of the things which people are talking about right now is, well, hang on a minute. If this deck was generated randomly by a computer, what if it is absolutely amazing? What, you know, what happens if the computer algorithm that generated this deck accidentally made a deck that will beat all of the decks? Therefore, you have the best deck in the world and you'll win every single game. It's too early to tell. I personally don't think that's going to be the case. Obviously, it's a card game. Uh, you don't choose what cards to play. You get them as they come out. So the cards will come out in a different order. And from the times that I have been playing this game, there is a skill factor to the game. But, you know, as I say, it's too early to tell. Right now, there's a lot of discussion about this game going on on the internet. Lots of people love the idea. Lots of people hate the idea. It's really too early to tell whether this is actually going to work or not you know, as a, as a game or anything else. We might be here in six months time saying the game crashed and burned and it was a complete failure. I personally don't think it is. I have played these two decks and I have taught people how to play these two decks and these two decks have played each other a number of times. I think possibly the blue deck has a slight advantage, but only slight. Um, I, I lost track of the, the winning ratios. It was like three games apiece when I lost track of, of, of keeping count of the actual score. But yeah, these two decks seem to be relatively balanced against each other. Um, and who knows what, you know, as I say, it, it's too early to tell. Now, let's talk about the game itself because the distribution model and the fact that it's a cool idea is irrelevant if the game itself isn't very good. And the game itself, I'm really enjoying this game. It does something very different. To give you a brief idea of how it works is your deck of 36 cards is made up of 12 cards each of three houses and you will generally speaking you will have six cards in your hand at the start of your turn um, that's the the default hand size and each turn you will choose I've drawn seven yeah I've drawn seven um, each turn you will choose one of those three houses and you can only play use and discard 
any number of cards of that house. Cards do not have a cost to play. There's no mana, there's no land. You can play as many cards as you want on your turn, as long as you only play cards of the house that you chose. So straight away, that, that is different from other games. And I've played this game enough to know that that's a really good idea and it really works well. So that's the first key difference is cards don't have a cost to play. The other really important tactical decision you need to make is, let's say you have played cards onto the table and they are now in front of you and these are creatures that I've played on a previous turn. I can only use these creatures on my turn if I choose the house of the creature. So you find, you find yourself faced with decisions. You're like, oh, I've got this really good card here and I really want to play this card. But this is of the house dis. And if I choose house dis, it means I can't then activate the creatures that I've got in play. And some turns you'll say, okay, I'm going to choose house sanctum and I'm just going to use these two cards. I'm not going to play any from my hand. I'm just going to use the ones that are in play. So you have these interesting decisions to make each turn of the game. Now, the other thing that's different about it is, unlike many games, card draw in this game is you draw back up to your hand size at the end of your turn. So if you've managed to play three cards or, or put some into play or done whatever, you will draw three cards at the end of your turn. So the more you play, the more you draw. And if your deck ever runs out, you just reshuffle your discard pile back in and create a new deck. So card draw is not as essential as it is in a number of other games. And you will generally go through your deck at least once, possibly even twice before the end of the game. So you will you will you will see the same cards again. It's not like a deck building game where you're going to go through it, you know, 10, 20 times. In fact, you can never add cards to your deck, but you will get to know, oh, there's a certain card. I've already played it once. I know it's in the deck. Right. I'm going to choose House Sanctum and I'm actually going to discard these cards so that I draw four more so that you can start going hunting for the card that you actually want. So yeah, very interesting decisions about how the game plays. You're also not trying to attack your opponent and deal them damage. No, in this game, you're trying to forge three keys and you get you, you forge a key by getting amber and you get amber from a number of places. But one of the things that creatures can do when you activate that creature or use that creature is you can reap with that creature and generate amber. So the reason why you will want to fight the other, the, the other player's creatures, because creatures can fight against each other, is you want to be killing their creatures if they've got special abilities um, which, which are going to hurt you, but also their creatures are going to be generating amber. So you will be fighting their creatures. In, it's just the gameplay feels really different. So anyway, this is my first impressions. I'm very, very excited about the game. I cannot wait for this game to come out because I want to run a tournament. I, as soon as it comes out, I want to get eight of my friends round, if I can find them, and um, get them here, give them each a deck, and, and off we go. And we'll just, and we'll just learn our, how to play our decks. It will be a voyage of discovery, um, learning what the cards are, learning how the game plays. Really, really looking forward to it. I don't know exactly when it's going to come out other than Q4. Um, I'm probably going to buy a starter set and probably about 10 booster packs because that gives me 10 decks to play. I mean, I, I, I love the game Ashes. Ashes is a, is a great game for me and I've played Ashes a whole bunch of times and I've never made my own deck. I just play with the pre-constructed decks that come with the game. So this game is that. You know, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy 10 decks or whatever and then I've got 10 decks which I can play and, and I can use and I'll be happily playing against those decks. Now, there is a chain system built in. It's like a handicap system. And there are ways during the game that you can collect these things called chains. And what they would do is they will give you uh, a disadvantage by making you draw fewer cards at the end of your turn. But the chain system is apparently going to be used as some kind of handicap system. So if, for example, I got these two decks and the blue deck always wins, let, let's just say that. Now, that's not the case, but let's say it was. What I can do is I can say, right, in order to play this blue deck against this green deck, the blue deck is going to start with two chains or three chains or four chains or whatever to try and balance them out. Now, of course, that works fine in casual play where you're playing against a friend and you're saying, look, you always win every time. So let's handicap you by giving you some of these chains. But in a tournament system, that that's not going to be the case. You know, you might get to a sealed deck tournament and somebody might open this uber powerful deck and then they win the tournament. I've no idea if that's going to be the case or not. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it isn't and I don't want to say it is. As I say, time will tell the future to see what it holds. I've just said some random words there, but rearrange them so that it makes a sentence. You know, you know what I mean? And what I'm saying is 
It is too early to tell. We won't know these things until later on, until Fantasy Flight introduced their organized play system. I know that each deck has a QR code on it. They haven't yet finally released what this QR code is actually for. Uh, the story's about around saying when you go to an organized play tournament, you'll scan in the QR code, that's your deck, and it'll say, ah, oh, hello, Mr. Grogan, I see that you've been doing very well in tournaments recently. We're going to start you with a bunch of chains. If this deck is so powerful it's really good and does very well in tournaments, when I turn up to play it, they might start me with a number of chains. That seems fair. It's like the handicap system in golf. We don't know. They haven't released a lot of this information yet. I just wanted to get this video out there because I am super excited about this game. I have been excited about it since I got told about it at Gen Con and I was thinking this isn't going to work. And the more I've played it, the more I have found the gameplay very interesting and I just want to play more of it. So that is my initial impressions of Keyforge and I hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks very much for watching. Take care until next time.